all right um welcome back everyone so in the previous part of this video this is where we um this is where we left off we had an expression we had an expression for the inlet flow rate inlet molar flow rate divided by the rate expression now the good news is this is all you need because if you refer back to the design equation all right if you refer back to the design equation the volume of the plug flow reactor the volume of the plug flow reactor was the definite integral, 0 to the desired conversion, and negative inlet molar flow rate divided by the rate expression. Of course, integrate that with respect to the conversion. Now this right here, this term right here, we got it. We have an expression for that in terms of the conversion. All right, the conversion is our independent variable. And everything else, our inlet volumetric flow rate, the rate constant, the equilibrium constant, the inlet concentration, those are all parameters. So upon substitution, upon substitution, make sure you take care of this negative sign here and this negative sign here. Make sure you take care of that. And the uh, resulting upon substitution, you'll get the, um, this is what your final integral is going to look like. So you're going to have volumetric flow rate divided by the rate constant for the forward reaction in the concentration of a 1 minus x squared minus x divided by the equilibrium constant all right so this right here is the uh, definite integral all right and now you can even now the next step is just evaluating this integral you've done the reaction engineering up till this point this equation right here the reaction engineering part is done. Now you just need to evaluate the integral. All right, now you need to evaluate the integral. And uh, yeah, now we have options to evaluate this integral. And uh, well, most of you already, um, since this is 2021, most of your um, Casio or TI calculators have numerical integration functions for, um, for definite integrals. So just use that, use your um, TI or Casio's, the calculators, all right? They have definite integral, like they can perform uh, integration for definite integrals, numerically, of course. And on the other hand, you have software, all right? You have the good old Wolfram Alpha. You've been using Wolfram Alpha since, I don't know, you got into calculus, all right? You have, I think, you can either use MATLAB or if an, or if you're an OG or if you're an OG you can just use Excel. You can just use Excel. If you're an OG, if you're old school, uh, you're you're just gonna use Excel. So um, all these options are good. All these options are valid. Oh, not to forget Symbol Lab. Symbol Lab is another favorite one. All right, Symbol Lab has the Symbol Lab can also perform symbolic integration, so that makes it really cool. So, uh, but I'm just going to be old school about it. I'm going to use Excel and Excel in addition with trapezoid rule. And that's how I'm going to numerically integrate this, um, this expression. All right. This is how I'm going to evaluate my definite integral. All right, good. Um, before I do that, I need to, uh, before I actually solve this integral, since it's a reversible reaction, since it's a reversible reaction, I need to I need to find my equilibrium conversion because the equilibrium conversion this right here is going to be the upper limit the equilibrium conversion is going to be the upper limit on the conversion that you can achieve and in order to achieve the equilibrium conversion the size of your reactor both the PFR and the CSTR both of them the size is going to tend to infinity okay all right because you and this is the upper limit you cannot violate thermodynamics cannot violate thermodynamics no violations of thermodynamics okay we've okay of thermo yay all right let's see um and in order to evaluate the equilibrium constant or equilibrium conversion i'm just going to write my rate expression once again and if you've been following the previous video, this was my rate expression in terms of the conversion. All right. And at equilibrium, at equilibrium. 
what happens to the rate expression at equilibrium what happens to the rate of reaction oops at equilibrium your rate the rate at which a is reacting goes to zero because the forward and the backward reaction are balanced with each balanced by each other so this is the equation that you get all right this is a uh, you're going to get a quadratic equation all right this is the quadratic equation that you're going to get oops don't forget the square here and i'm going to be solving this the parameters that i'm going to be solving the entire problem let me just write out my parameters my parameters are going to be inlet volumetric flow rate of 2 meter cube per second inlet concentration of 10 mole per meter cube uh, rate constant uh, i need my rate constant my rate constant is going to be 0 0.025 uh, i believe that's meter cube per mole second good and my equilibrium constant my equilibrium constant is going to be 2.25 for this for this example meter cube per mole all right now if you plug in these values uh, upon substitution of the uh, inlet concentration and the equilibrium expression all right this is the uh, this is how your quadratic equation is going to start looking like all right and uh, well i just used my calculator i used the uh, solver function and the equilibrium conversion came out to be 0 0.81 so that was my that's my upper limit okay that's my upper limit to the conversion that i can achieve either in a cstr or in a pfr i cannot go 0 0.82 at this temperature all right maybe if i play around with different temperatures i can break the ceiling but right now we're uh, i need to emphasize we're doing isothermal operation we're doing isothermal operation only right now All right, right now we're just in the isothermal operation part of the saga. So let's uh, let's switch up Excel. All right, let's switch things up. Whoop. All right, here we go. So um, as you can see, uh, give me one second. My bad. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's set this up. Sorry. So my inlet well, so my inlet molar flow rate two meter cube per second. Inlet concentration ten mole per meter cube. Oh, rate constant was 0 0.025. Good. And the KC, the equilibrium constant was 2.25. Uh, round that to, yeah, this is being rounded to, actually, let me just format this. I, I need the, uh, this is better. All right, good. So, um, all right, in the, uh, in cell, all right, starting from here, uh, excuse me. So we're gonna this is gonna be our this column is gonna represent our conversions and this column is gonna represent our uh, this expression right here so the expression for negative inlet molar flow rate divided by the rate expression the one that's right here here this one okay all right oops uh, give me one second get rid of that all right so let's start off by we're gonna start off at zero uh, I don't need that in bold, zero. And we're gonna go in increments of 0 0.05. All right, I really don't need, hold on. Let me just see what I can do about it. So I'm gonna go up till 0 0.75. And all of this is not gonna be, all right, good. Mm, I don't need that, okay. So, all right, in from A8 till A23, I have my conversions. And now to get my, vertical ordinate all right so I ha i'll have my volumetric flow rate divided by my rate constant multiply that by my inlet concentration that will be multiplied by one minus all right oh um not to forget i need absolute references sorry about that absolute references for those parameters and uh, x that's where x goes you get to square that and x once again divided by kc don't forget to use absolute references all right good and let's see let me just drag it down for now and control b that okay um now now i can just um 
insert a scatter plot and get 11 spiel plot oops i'm missing one value my bad now i can just um x is gonna be the conversion is gonna be my horizontal axis and the inlet flow rate divided by the rate expression is gonna be my vertical axis and now i can just insert a 11 spiel plot so i'm gonna use the smooth plot look at that and uh, let's play around with this a little make sure our formatting is correct on the horizontal axis i'm gonna have oops conversion and this is going to be conversion of species a and on the vertical axis i'll have I'll, I'll just label it as negative f a naught divided by r a all right and this is going to be my 11 spiel plot all right let's give this the title 11 spiel plot good all right so once you actually have the 11 spiel plot you can um the 11 spiel plot is a great tool to visualize this data and this is going to help you decide whether you need a uh, pfr for this um reactor design or you need a csdr so i'm just going to move this to a different sheet move that chart to a new sheet and i'm going to call that 11 spiel good so 11 spiel all right that looks okay ish i'm gonna accept this one um formatting issues formatting issues we need good formatting all right that's uh let's see apart from the levin spiel plot let's see i i want the area i want to evaluate the area okay i want to evaluate the area of the trapezoid this um integral for that i'm gonna have a trap column the trapezoid and this is just gonna include um areas of the trapezoid and at zero conversion this is just gonna be zero so the area of trapezoid, if I remember that correctly, it's going to be 0.5 times the summation of parallel sides. They're going to be my parallel sides. Multiply that by the width. The uh, width on the horizontal axis. All right. Let's just drag it down for now. All right. And the actual integral is going to be the summation. The actual integral is going to be the summation of these. All right, so the actual integral is going to be the summation of these trapezoids. So in the first cell, it's just going to be the first trap. And as you go along, you'll have the previous trapezoid plus the uh, next trapezoid. And as you keep dragging it down, you get the, uh, well, you get the volume of the PFR. You get the volume of the PFR at the uh, desired conversion. So this means that at a desired conversion of 0 .0, uh, 0 0.75, the required volume of PFR, an ideal PFR, is going to be 32.39 meter cube. So yeah, this right here is done. Like this basically is pretty much it. Now, um, and you also have your 11 spiel plot, so you can do a, you can play around with the Levin spiel plot and maybe see if a CS, uh, how the CSTRs and the PFRs are going to compare. But our goal was to size the PFR and we've done that. So at any given conversion now, I can just pick up my, if I can just like pick up the volume of my PFR. All right. So yeah, that, that was pretty much it. And for this volume of CSTR, for the volume of CSTR, let me just uh, drag these on the side for a second. Um, if I were to move these on the side, I'll have to give me one second. Now I can also add volume of CSTRs. Sorry about that. Now the volume of CSTR is just going to be the product of the conversion and this uh, vertical ordinate, as you can see in this um, formula here. Sorry about that. Let me see if I can move it around a little. Okay, this goes here. Good. And this right here goes a little. Mm, all right, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get rid of it for now because you guys have seen it. Um, you guys have seen it. You guys don't need it right now. But for the CSTR, on the other hand, you guys are. Uh, that's what we're gonna do, real quick. Oops. Nope. Nope. All right. So this is just gonna be the product of conversion and the vertical ordinate. Good. And as you drag it down. 
we get the volume of CSTR. So I'm just gonna rearrange this. I'm gonna move the trap. Now, now the trap column is just for computation. Like it does not have any physical, it does not have any real physical significance. The volume of PFR and the volume of CSTR is what we're looking for. So I'm gonna have these side by side. All right, so now you can just compare. Let me just um, reformat this real quick. Uh, format this, I need the, uh, give me one. I need the numbers to be, I think two, two decimal points are gonna be good enough, right? Look at that, all right. So now you can just compare in table, in the uh, column C versus column D. Column D contains PFR, column C contains CSTR. So now you can just compare which one's bigger. And for this application, the PFRs are the one that, the PFRs are dominating. The PFRs are giving you the uh, smaller volume. So the PFRs are gonna be more economical based on just the volume, all right? So thank you very much, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this exercise. And thanks for sticking till the end, all right? Good luck.